So once the relevant information has been provided, you must label the looker by asking you're currently looking for a house. Yes, how are you going about finding the perfect house? So if their answer implies they're not being intentional, say, how would you like to use a proactive process? Right, there are people, especially early on in their um, journey, I've seen the most proactive people, organized people not have a process because this is not what we do every day. This is not what consumers do every day. They don't look for a house every single day. So you have to educate the consumer. That is your job. Not to tell them, hey, did you see these cabinets? So much potential, guys. Oh, this is gorgeous. Now that's important. I may not have been the best at that. That's important. But I will tell you the most important things are these conversations, not how great the, the granite countertops are. So here we go, you may be required, when you're asking for information from people, you may be required to, um, to justify, right? So can't you just email me the information, right? Can't you just email me? All the races do this, other races don't have me do this. Here we go, ready, ready, here's the punch. Exactly. Understand that I'm a real estate consultant. I'm extremely serious about what I do. I don't do this part time. I run a business. And I'm not just in the business of showing houses. I'm in the business of satisfying needs. I have a process that I use with all of my clients. Therefore, before I start emailing you information, we need to define your perfect home and make sure the homes you consider fall within your financial comfort zone. We need to thoroughly discuss our roles and expectations in a successful working relationship. I believe the best approach when investing in a large sum of money is to operate as an intentional and proactive team. Wouldn't you agree? Great, I have two o'clock tomorrow, we can meet on Zoom. Does that work for you? Okay. When you have these conversations, you're providing value. And I've heard it before, but Mike, buyers are liars. They just want to be tour touring houses. Guess what, guys? Remember what I told you that I've used as a benchmark? You got 100 customers in your database. You should be working with 10% of those. And then the, the other 90% are being nurtured through your system. So have conversation in Zoom. Oh, my goodness. You could just be blazing right through these conversations. Blazing, and then here's the last one, right? So if the answer is no, move on. Why, especially the internet leads. I hear this all my freaking life over here. <laughs> we talk about internet leads. Mike, the leads are bad, the leads are bad, stop it. I gave you the numbers of conversion rates on internet inquiries. So that means if they inquire on social media as well, that's an internet inquiry. Now in our market in New York, uh, data has been given to me and then it said it's a, a one, two, three percent conversion rate. If you're in other markets, sometimes it's three to seven percent conversion rate of these inquiries. So it means for every hundred, you should be getting three transactions. Yes or yes? So stop saying these people are, the leads are bad. Your job is to talk to more people. You're overthinking it, and that's why you're not getting to interaction. So here we go, more direct approach to uh, getting right to it with the customer and New Yorkers, of course, are a little bit more aggressive and they like this stuff. Um, so another way to justify your meetings is to say, in regards to your next home, it is important that you make an informed, intelligent decision. Yes or yes? Who doesn't want to make an intelligent decision? Who doesn't want to make an informed decision? Use language like informed, intelligent decision. It is important that you take a proactive approach rather than a reactive approach. Agents do this as well. They're, they're being just as reactive as the, as the customer and they're wondering why they're in, bad joke coming, real estate, right? They're just driving around, driving around, driving around, showing houses, showing houses because they're not taking a proactive approach. They're the order taker, right? My customer sent me 40 properties and I'm gonna take them to 38 of them. Hello, <whistles> talking to you out there. I've received those emails before from customers. Mike, I'm so excited to work with you. Here are 40 properties I'd like to look at on Thursday. And you're like, what? It's because you're in the reactive zone, not the proactive zone. Had you educated them, had a conversation, a 15 minute Zoom conversation could probably save you 15 hours. 
Stop thinking the consumer has gotten all the information. That's why real estate agents still exist. Real estate agents still exist because you're the consultant. You're there to interpret the data, the process. Because it's overwhelming. When you go on the internet, it's so overwhelming, right? Is it important that you get the home you want and more importantly, you want the home you get? Is it important that you make a logical decision rather than one based entirely on emotion, right? So if the answer is yes, then shouldn't we use a proactive process that will guarantee these things? If no, next. You live in the world of abundance. If the conversion rate of consumers that are acquiring your property on any social media, right? WeChat, Instagram, Facebook, any website, uh, Zillow, Reels.com, Homes.com, Remax.com, if the conversion rate of all those customers is one to 3% per, per 100,000, right? Uh, or rather just one to 3% locally, that means you have to get more people. Live in the world of abundance. And by the way, you're not just, just throwing them away, you, you, you'll put them in your process that we've communicated about in this program. So look who's working with another agent. Are you currently in the market for a home? Yes. How are you going to find your perfect home? We're working with an agent. When we're working with an agent. Sometimes people say they're working with an agent to blow you off. They don't like you because you just haven't communicated with them. You haven't given enough information. Here we go. Here's the conversation. What process are you using to guarantee you get the home you want? And more importantly, you want the home you get? I'm not sure what you mean. Did your agent invest time on the front end defining your perfect home? Making sure of your financial parameters and thoroughly discussing the rules and expectations necessary for a successful working relationship. Today, my friends, Zoom, 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 or some type of uh, device that you can do a video call with people. I like Zoom because you could share your screen, you could share data. And of course, always ask, did you sign anything with an agent? So Luker's not a buyer. This is probably what a lot of agents are hoping for here. Uh, they're hoping that the buyer is actually a seller. So I'm gonna give you some of the, the tips that I've seen uh, people, that's why I love that clipboard, is they, 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 they cringe when you ask them for information. Like, um, say, hey, what's your first and last name? Uh, John and uh, Smith. Ah, so already in my mind, I'm thinking, why the person hesitate? You know, I know I'm a stranger, but my name is in the marketplace. Usually people give up their information, especially serious buyers. I'm not asking for anything that's more than just their first and last name. Then your email address. I understand email address is very sensitive to, to a lot of people, but that's why you need to promise them that you're not going to spam. You're only going to send information that's relevant to the real estate transaction. But when people hesitate, that's when the spidey senses come up. Like, oh, okay, who are they? Are they a seller? So ask, what, what brings you here? Just looking around. Have you ever thought about selling your house? No. Do you know anyone interested in buying or selling? No. It was a pleasure speaking with you. I keep the, the dialogue basic, but know that you should be investigating. Know that you should be investigating. If they're not a buyer, then why are they there? They've got a reason for being there. Remember, if they say no, you must say next, right? And, you know, say no. I wouldn't say just next, but I would say your focus of your energy should be next. The, if they say no, I would say nurture. If they say no, then nurture. Uh, if they say no, say next, right? So we have to decide which path you're going to take, right? If they say no, you say next, uh, but then do you nurture. The follow-up dialogue. This, my friends, is a tough one for agents. Because, they, because agents, are, we're all human, and we're trying to give people space, and uh, should I wait for the three, right? You know this one, the three-day rule, right? That's how humans are when they uh, direct, oh, I'll give this person space, and I'll call them back in three days. So now the question for a lot of folks when they have an open house, I don't want to call them on a Monday, you know, they're back to work, or, or they, they're taking the dog for a walk in the morning, they're Kids are going to school, whatever they do, they're going to the gym. I, I don't know, but agents will make excuses as to why they're not following up with somebody. Just call. So make sure you follow up with all attendees who signed the register and were just looking as well. 
Hi, this is Michael in Baltown of Remax Edge. Did I catch you at a good time? Right. It's okay to do that for a, for a customer like this. You don't want to call them a minute and start irritating. First, let me say that I really enjoyed meeting you at the open house on Saturday, Sunday, whatever day. Did you have any further questions about the house? You know, sometimes they said they were just looking, but then all of a sudden, mysteriously, on a Monday, by the way, this is data that I've used, guys. This is not something that just read in a book. I, it's happened to me where people said they were just looking. Then I call them on a Monday and ask them a question. Hey, do you have any further questions? Like, actually, I did. Actually, I did. Can I convert this house to, I don't know, a three family from a two?